Introducing Pokemon Claw and Fang, a brand new Pokemon Fakemon region created by Zetastrokes on Instagram. Now this region isn't particularly based on a specific location, but there are a lot of North American wilderness references, lots of Japanese references, and also lots of South American references as well. And you may guess by the title Claw and Fang, there are a lot of beasts here, and this is called the Feral region. So let's get into it. The grass starter is Cub Prince, which merges Cub and Prince together. And it is a bear Pokemon and you can see that it's got Kiwi colors on it as well. So those light greens and those browns together. It evolves into Proudy, which is Proud and Teddy together. And as you can see, it's got like a little crown on the front of its head and it's looking a little bit more posh now. It looks a little bit more regal. And then finally evolves into King Ursa. So Ursa meaning bear. So like your Ursa Lunas or your Ursa Rings as well, using Ursa in it. And this has got a much bigger crown now on the front of its head it's got like a cape around it as well and it's got some gold on its arms too so looks quite important i would say so that is our grass final evolution it is a grass and rock type as well our fire starter is pie Cam, which is a wolf pokemon but also has some native american influences as well which you can tell on the head and it's also got a little bit of a flame on the end of its tail too it evolves into apicam which combines apache and cam together cam is actually the turkish word for a shaman so we'll see that as this evolves as well you can see it's holding a ball of fire now and it has a large flame on its tail too and then finally it evolves into alpha cam again north american influences in there which is very cool but it looks really nice i like this design a lot the fire is no longer on its tail but it does look like it's got fire coming off its arms and this one is a fire and fairy type pokemon and then our water starter is called jelly me so it's like a jellyfish but also a ninja combined together it evolves into kunomi which now has almost like a fan of knives coming from its hand which i think is really really cool Definitely still looking like a ninja, but also like a jellyfish as well, particularly with the head. And then its final evolution is Ninjusa, obviously combining ninja as well. The Fanta Knives has got a little bit bigger now. I feel this kind of looks very similar to the middle evolution, just a little bit more grown up, I would say. But it's still a very, very cool looking Pokemon. This is a water and fighting type Pokemon. Which starter are you going to pick, guys? I think I'm going to choose Alpha Cam as my starter. And let me know down in the comments what your starter is as well. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't before, especially if you love fake. Mons, I go through a lot of fake mon regions and a lot of Pokemon regions as well. And our professor for the region is Professor Alita. Now, Professor Alita is based on the Selmatis Alita flower, which has a very similar color scheme to the hair of the professor here, as you will notice. You can also see she has an interesting Pokemon on her shoulder as well. I will get into that a little bit later on. It's one of my favorites of the region. It looks really cool. Now, as we choose our start and we head out into our feral region, one of the first Pokemon you might see is called Green Miner, and it is a bug type Pokemon that is based on a worm, and it is actually a minor Pokemon. Pokemon, hence the word miner in it. And it's got like a little mining helmet as well, like with a torch on it, which I think is really, really cool. And this Pokemon likes to hunt for gold. It evolves into Helicoon, which is now a bug and steel type Pokemon. Kind of similar to what we had before. It's got like a torch on the front, but it's now definitely more armored. So that mining helmet almost looks like it envelops the whole Pokemon as well. And then the final evolution is Excatross, using the word excavate in it as well. As you can see, it's got lots of gold on it as well, on its wings and on its body, because that is what it mines. And you can see it's got drills for hands as well. So he's a very, very efficient miner. Our root one bird is called Egg which is a normal and flying type. Doesn't look like much yet. It's just a shell, but you can see the beak and the wing sticking out as well. It actually combines egg and dance together for Egg Ants. Doesn't look much like a dancer yet, though. It does a little bit more when it evolves into Flacerest, which is based on a flamingo. Definitely looks like he's dancing now. He's ready to get his groove on, which is very, very cool. But interesting, its final evolution has two forms. It evolves into Fladance, which is now a flying and fire type, but there's two forms that it can pick. It can either be more of a ballerina kind of elegant look which you can see on the left there especially in the coloring and it's standing on its tippy toes like a ballerina but then on the right hand side we've got a different form and it looks more like a south american dancer but both flying and fire types both looking very cool and of course still based on our flamingos as well another bug type that we have on route one is called umbris which is actually bug and dark type pokemon which i think looks very creepy it looks like it's got a skeleton on it as well which is really cool it's actually based on the pink underwing moth which looks very similar to this it it evolves into Kokal, which combines Cocoon and Skull together. Very ominous looking here. Doesn't look like it's too dangerous at the moment, but it does still look kind of creepy. And then evolves into our bug and dark type, Thanamoth, which is very, very cool. It is based off Thanatos, which is personification of death. So very, very creepy underlying story here. But this looks really cool. I love the looks on this. The black and the white work so well together, but even like the orange coming off it as a really good contrast looks really nice. Next, we have Sombroom, which is a poison 
legend and fairy type Pokemon. And I feel this kind of is a similar color scheme to Shenotic and is still a mushroom as well. So very, very similar, but it's actually a different Pokemon. This is combining mushroom and sombrero together because the top of the mushroom does look like a giant hat. I think this Pokemon is pretty cool. It changes colors as it evolves into Mist Room, which has now got a massive blue, like bulbous part on the top of the mushroom. And then finally evolves into Yaga Room, which combines the Baba Yaga with our mushroom. And you can see that it hasn't got legs, but you can see it's starting to look a little bit more humanoid now. It's got arms and a body and a face on it as well. And kind of combines the two previous evolutions in terms of the color to come up with Yaga Room. I'm now going to show you your first regional form, which is called Feral Bellsprout. It definitely looks a little bit more sad, maybe. I don't know. I think that's in the eyes. It's actually based on Lurch from the Adams family. He's just very tall and very lean and has a similar kind of build, I would say. It evolves into our Feral Weeping Bell, which as you can see, again, still kind of looks sad or depressed in a way. This is a grass and ghost type, by the way. And the hair makes it almost look like an emo haircut, I would say. But I do like the coloring in this. I think it looks really cool. And then the cool thing is about our Feral Weeping Bell is that it has a split evolution now, new evolutions. So the first one is Wick Tree Bell, which you can see is based on a witch. It looks like a witch's hat on the top and witch's hair coming out. And it's got like a long spindly claw arm as well. I think that looks really, really cool. That's the first evolution. The second one is Grim Tree Bell. So this one almost looks like a really thin body, I think. Almost looked like the vines at the front are making a body and it's kind of running away. The name like Grim Tree Bell, that definitely sounds very spooky. And now it's our first dragon Pokemon. This is a grass and dragon type. This is a Spindra, which is based on a thorny devil. You can see it's got those spikes coming off it as well and a spiky tail, but it's also based on a dragon fruit. As you can see in the bottom of the jaw, it's got those black speckles on the white background. That is the inside of the dragon fruit and the outside of the dragon fruit makes the rest of the colors, which is really cool. It evolves into Scaldra, which looks kind of similar, but it's now getting a bit more grown up, a little bit more mature as well. And then finally evolves into Hylodra, which is much, much bigger now. It's got really strong, powerful legs and a really strong, powerful tail because it's actually now based on a Komodo dragon, which have those features as well. I love that it keeps the coloring with the dragon fruit. It's got the underside of the jaw, but now also the belly as well is now colored like the inside of the dragon fruit. So I think this looks really cool. I like it a lot. Next is our first puppy Pokemon, which is called Chiotic. This is an electric and normal type Pokemon. It's based on a Chow Chow, which are very, very fluffy, very, very cute dogs. And as you can see, it's got a blue ear and a red ear, which will make a little bit more sense as it evolves and evolves into Bartrick. And as you can see on those ears now, there's a positive and a negative charge because it's an electric type Pokemon. So that's why those are different colors. And you can see it's very, very fluffy, but also very strong and powerful, especially in those back legs as well. And it's got an interesting collar that looks like an electric bolt on it as well. Our next feral Pokemon is Feral Crab Brawler. And this is a fighting and steel type. And it's actually based on Frankie from One Piece. So if you're a One Piece fan, you'll definitely see the resemblance here. Ah, super! with the blue hair and also the stars on his hands as well. And then it evolves into a brand new Pokemon called Rock Crabenta, which is again, based on Frankie, it's got those stars and it's also got that attitude that Frankie has as well. Next is a poison and steel type Pokemon called Corfin, which I think looks very cute, but he's very oozy and very toxic as well. I absolutely love that the holes on the end of its nose make that like toxic waste kind of symbol. So I think that is absolutely fantastic. That is such a cool idea. It evolves into Radiofant, which is again very very toxic you can see it's got almost like a toxic waste mask on its face you can see that it doesn't have tusks it has like those vent holes that you would see in one of those toxic masks it's got a toxic waste symbol on its head it's got a toxic waste symbol in its trunk as well and it's just dripping with toxic ooze i absolutely love this next pokemon feral bergmite it is a ground type pokemon but i just think it's such a clever idea to have an iceberg pokemon but then transfer it into a sand dune pokemon as well it looks very angry very cranky but i think it's really 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 well done. I love that idea. And then evolves into two Sankalug, which has a lot of Egyptian references. Obviously, we've got the pyramid. Obviously, we've got Sandy Colors. You can see he's got the Eye of Horus around his eye as well. You can see the tail has an ank on it. It just has so many Egyptian references, which I think is really, really cool. This is super well done, I think. Next is a Pokemon called Cereal, which is a crocodile, but it also has what looks like shedded skin around it as well, which I think is really cool. This is a normal and psychic type Pokemon. I love the name Cereal. I think that's really cool 
because this Pokemon actually looks kind of crazy. You can see the eye looks very crazy as well. Almost the skin around it could almost be like a straight jacket because it's kind of tied up as well. And that all makes sense because it evolves into Slamzard, which definitely looks like some kind of serial killer. One of its arms is now a massive knife. That crazy eye has got even crazier. It's like got a skull on the top of its head as well. Very, very grim looking colors. I think that is really, really cool. And the name Slamzard actually combines Slash and Michael Myers and Lizard together to all create Slamzard. So it is definitely like a serial killer. Pumpkaida is a poison and dark type Pokemon. And I think this looks really cool. The pumpkin looks very, very cute. It's even got a bow on top of it, but the spider looks a little bit evil, a little bit devious. I think this is a really cool combination here. And then it evolves into Disweeder, which has the word disguise, sweet, and spider all together. You can see it is disguised as like a pumpkin and lollies and candy canes as well, all together, but it does make a spider, which is very, very cool. I do love my spider Pokemon. Next is called Feral Drag Goose. Now, Feral Pokemon have been from other Pokemon we've had before, but the artist Zeta Strokes actually made this based on someone else's fake mon for their region. So they made their own version of it as well. So that's why it's a feral Pokemon, if that makes sense. So feral Dragoose is a dragon and fairy type Pokemon. And as you can see, it looks like it's got a massive duck head, but you see the little face in the middle. That's actually the Pokemon's face. The duck is actually kind of like a disguise. This is based on the flying duck orchid. It evolves into Gidragoose, which combines like a Hydra now because now it's got three heads. It's kind of like Hydreigon as well, but you can still see that face in the middle of it, of the middle of the flower, is the actual Pokemon itself. So I think that is a really cool idea. Those ducks look very, very aggressive. Our Feral Yamas now has a completely different mask. This has a Kitsune mask, which is really cool, but also looks kind of like an aggressive Pokemon. It looks like it's got some scratches underneath its eye, and its eye makes it look quite angry and aggressive as well. This is a fighting and ghost type. And it has a new evolution now in Kitsurigus. So as you can see, those massive claws, massive hands coming out. Out, and it looks like it's based on a kitsuno. You can see it definitely looks like a wolf in the middle there, but it has got a face, a scary kind of face in the middle of that. So the wolf itself is not the actual Pokemon. Again, that is a disguise. There seems to be a lot of disguises in this region. Next is Strawbuffo, which is a psychic and grass type Pokemon. And it looks like those little strawberry lollies that you can get, but it actually combines strawberry with UFO together. Those eyes definitely look kind of like alien eyes. So that makes sense. But it definitely looks like an alien now when it evolves into Strawly and Strawly strawberry and alien together. It definitely looks like an alien hiding in a little UFO, which I think is really cool. So this Pokemon floats above the ground in a little UFO that's made out of strawberries, which I think is very, very cute. Now, this is the Pokemon you might have seen on the professor's shoulder. This is Scrodrillion, which is a steel and ghost type. So it's a chameleon, but it also disguises itself as like a multi-tool as well. You can see it's got like a screwdriver end to its tail, and you can see it looks like it could be used for lots of different aspects of like a pocket knife. It evolves into Toolbra, which is a snake, but it Again, it combines a lot of those tools together. So the tail looks like a paint roller, but its face is actually like a hammer as well. So if it keeps its mouth closed, it's like the end of a hammer, but you can see you've got the spiky bit of the hammer behind it as well. And then finally it evolves into Crocodrill, which I think is very, very cool. It definitely looks like a chainsaw. Got a lot of spikes on the end of it. It's even got like the handle for the chainsaw on top of it as well, but it's got massive metallic jaws. This is a steel and ghost type. Just a reminder that the artist for this region is Zeta Strokes, and I'll put a link to the Instagram down in the description below, but some terrible news. Just recently, Zeta Strokes has passed away. I spoke to their friend and they wanted to let you guys know that Zeta had a lot of mental health problems and I wanted to put a link down in the description for some resources that you can use if you are struggling as well. I offer Zeta Strokes' family and friends my condolences. You can still follow Zeta Strokes on Instagram to see lots more detail about their region that's not covered in this video. Awesome, awesome artwork there. Go and check it out, guys. Now, what I think is the pseudo legend for the region is called Corny Roo, and it's a dragon and water type, and it's combining a dragon, but also with coral together, which I think is really cool. It's got coral antlers on the front, but also coral on the end of its tail as well. It evolves into Corny Sumi, which is based on a Japanese mythical dragon. Still has coral on the antlers on the tail as well, but it's definitely getting a bit more grown up and a bit bigger. And then lastly, evolves into Corny Mistu, which looks very, very cool. It's got a few big scales coming off the body now, and you can see the tail 
tail is getting a bit more spikier and it's got some extra purple coral coming off its cheeks as well now. Next, we've got a baby form of Sableye, which I think looks absolutely adorable. This is called Baby, and you can see it's still got the gemstone, still looks a lot like a Sableye, but also kind of looks like a bit of a plushie or a bit of a teddy now, I think, like stitching down in the middle. Next, we have a couple of Pokemon that don't have any evolutions. They're just on their own. And the first one is Butter Moon, which is obviously based on a butterfly, but also combines moon as well. And it is a bug and ice type. So it looks like it has some snowflakes on it. You can see a snowflake design on Spotty, but also a snowflake design in the wings, which is really cool. But also give these vibes, maybe it's like a ninja. I don't know. That like yellow headband on the top of it and the eyes looking kind of dangerous definitely makes it look like a bit of a ninja to me i'm not sure if that's intentional or not but it's got like that big proboscis that a, a butterfly has as well next is i think one of my favorites in the region this is petricoon which is based on petrified wood and a raccoon together i love that it's got like almost like a caveman has a bone in the top of its head there but it's like bits of wood like it's got leaves coming off it and i think it just looks really really cool a very interesting design this is a rock and grass type and next is cell lava which is obviously based on cell from dragon ball z definitely looks like same kind of head as cell as well but this looks like something that will evolve but doesn't have an evolution just yet this is a bug and fighting type but i think that looks really really cool interesting how we have a one piece reference before and now we've got a dragon ball z reference as well really really interesting and next we're going to what I think may be the legendary. This is an electric and dragon type Pokemon. It's called Thundrakian. So as you can see, massive thunderbolts on the head and on the tail as well. Definitely looks like a dragon reptile, similar to Rayquaza maybe. But an interesting thing is that the tail actually has the head kind of like an alien. So a couple of alien based Pokemon in this region, which I think is quite interesting. But I think that looks very, very cool. And that is Pokemon Claw and Fang. My favorite Pokemon were Alpha Cam, which was the fire starter. That Animoth, Pumpkaida, and Petricoon. I thought all of them were fantastic designs. Let me know down in the comments what your favorites were too. Make sure you subscribe for lots more Pokemon content, guys, and check out some of my other Fakemon regions as well. Thanks.